Welcome back, everyone, to the finals, grand finals of the Lobster Roll Series, which isn't the grand finals, not the losers finals. Grand finals. We'll check that she's showing up. Yes. Lobster Roll Week War Grand Finals. So we have Lagomanon versus Golda. They've already banned out everything, but. So they banned Frosty Cove, Itsuki, Mercurial, Intersection. Uh... So they banned down to Baron, Fallendell, and Mech. And Mech. Or I guess. What? Okay, I guess we just hadn't. All right, we're on Mecha and Sonia. So far, we have seen every single map on stream but Mercurial. So we are on Mecha and Zonia. That's that will be neat. I mean, it is a it is a very macro oriented map, so I think Gold is going to have an advantage here, but I don't know. I mean, Legomenon might be okay. Uh, it's one of those things that I just don't really understand so well. I haven't seen enough of Legomenon's play to know if they're that micro-oriented or they don't expand that quickly or not. But again, as I frequently say, my game crashed. Actually, no, don't, don't frequently say that. The game's pretty stable. That was surprising. But as I frequently say... There is a real distinction between the top level players and everyone else in terms of how quickly people expand, especially in a map like Mechan and Sonia. Although Mechan and Sonia is a bit weird. It's one of those maps where it actually does work a bit more like StarCraft in the sense of a slower expansion pattern because it is very clustered and a lot of the expansions are quite distant from each other. So there isn't the commitment of expansion because you have to spend a bunch of resources you otherwise wouldn't spend, but there is a commitment of expansion because you have... A cat meowing at you. Sorry, a commitment expansion because you have a much larger distance to travel between expansions. But that will be something we see once we actually get into the game because, like I said, the game did in fact crash. That is our technical problem for the day. 0k crashed at one point before the game actually even loaded. We... Uh... There we go. Okay, so they're, they're still working out what they're going to do. Oh, Lagomna. Are they going for it? Ooh, I think they're going for a sneaky play. Are they doing the Golda play? Golda likes to play Spider or Jump Bot up... A uh, Spider up here in this one cliff area. I think Lagomon is going for that instead. Lagomna, are you being Trixie? Are you being Trixie? No, you're being Lagomna. That's your name. Your name isn't Trixie. Where's Golda, anyway? Seriously, where the heck is Golda gone? Eek. Hmm. Yep, I got one going for spiders. Very fast spider build, and that should be pretty good. Spider set up. Where's Golda? Okay, go to are they okay, they're doing the same thing. We are in fact gonna see a Trixie Spider Mirror. That is our game for today. Both players going for the exact same build. Well, okay. One more technical problem for the day, and then we'll, we'll, we'll be moving on to the game proper. Oh, that's no good. I 
Yeah, we have... Gota being a Trixie boy. Kagamana being a Trixie person. I can't right now. Sorry, Andre. My cat being... Needing something, and unfortunately I'm not in the best... Position for dealing with that right now. All I can do is move around the map and... I don't know, play around a bit with... I don't know, Death Fields fine. Sorry, I'm getting distracted trying to test the Death of Fields effects. <laughs> it's like, I, it's good! I've made it! It's all good! I'm getting distracted. Where the heck is Golda? Well, anyway, dress chat. The so, King's Tad asking about the jazz. Yeah, so the jazz actually was something that I got from a friend because when I was doing Battle Right casts, when I was doing Battle Right casts a few years ago, a friend of mine, I was doing it with, we did our own, like, there was, we were with an org, we were with an org doing commentary for them, but we were also, we did some of our own stuff. I made our own tournaments and had our own little thing that was just like us and one other person for on broadcast. And my friend basically pulled up a bunch of OC Remix jazz stuff, like Chrono Trigger OC Remix jazz, and I really liked it. And so I, when afterwards I started, I needed to change up my streaming stuff for Zero K, I decided, well, why not just use that and then do the same thing? Like have the jazz and have a situ have video of like battles going on in the background of the fixed camera, which is also part of how that other battle right thing was done. And I think it worked out pretty well. And said friend has seen what's ha has seen what I've done, and they were quite impressed. Like, they were really happy that I was using that or making use of that same concept. All right, Golda apparently has dealt with their computer lag problems. Hopefully, that will lead to the game starting again because it started; it just paused. So, lead to the game unpausing. War zone active. All right, so Golda. Again, spiders. Both players quick on the Weaver. And so far, the Gominon already going for the Flea Venom. I think with Golda, it's just... Oh, just Fleas. Fleas first. I thought it was just Venom for some reason. So that'll be a bit of a shock. I mean, Legomenon's expecting Golda to go this... Do exactly this thing. But I don't think Golda's expecting Legomenon to respond in kind. Although one difference here seems to be that Legomenon isn't going for a direct assault. They're just going for a scout. They're sending their fleas out kind of in a typical just scouting pattern, seeing, making sure they know what's going on, making sure they can keep track of troop movements and so forth. Gota, on the other hand, is using them as a mainline assault force. Which will be in a bit of a rough surprise once they see that the Venom is here, although the radar is going to go down, which is sad. Unfortunately, I mean, fortunately for spiders, all weavers have radar attached. So it's not as big of a loss as it seems. I mean, the commander, of course, already has it, but weavers also have it still a pain. It's just not, you know, as much of a problem. Now, with the Venom up, Fleas are done, but they have gotten a lot of wind kills. Gota's base, on the other hand, completely untouched. Less energy focused, more metal focused, which is how Gota tends to play. So this is where things are going to become tricky, because Gota has loads of Fleas everywhere, and Legomenon has not been expanding very quickly. I like the fact that they're reclaiming, but they also haven't expanded very quickly, and they've got to like, eventually get that metal up. Whereas Gold has kind of put themselves in a position where they've essentially stopped any real expansion going on without escorts. That'll slow the Gominon down. So Gorda will be able to take most of the map in the process, and well, with Gorda already taking the front center of the map, it's easy to take everything behind there, but Gorda's also put fleas all over the backyard, and Legominon's gotta have to deal with those, gonna have to deal with those before they can actually expand into the area they nominally control. So that's a bit of a problem coming in here for the Gominon. Though, in fairness, the Gominon has done a decent job at least getting in for the first few minutes of the match. Really, it's, once these fleas go away, it won't be a big problem. The Gominon's still holding up pretty well in terms of overall economy compared to Gola. It's just these residual fleas. So they need to give their side of the map a flea bath. And once that's done, all the expansion can proceed apace. 
That being said, they aren't really looking to it. They have two Weavers in the main base, primarily focusing on building up Overdrive. Well, I have a radar. Thank you. You built a radar. I'm very glad to see it. And, yeah, Legomenon as well. They've... Ooh, I see. The... Oh, there's was Venom in the water. But Legomenon hasn't upgraded their command to a lightning gun. No, they haven't. There was a Venom in the water. Actually, overall, that Venom... Those Venoms are doing some really good work. Oh, not to mention the Lotus... Ah, that is clever. Yeah, Venom covered with Lotus on the end, so the flea can't really come back. I don't agree with that Lotus position, because it's not going to cover everything. Like, that last Metal Extractor can be hit by fleas. But everything else will be safe. Where's Legomenon? Oh, I see what Legomenon's up to. Getting a little Lotus on the side here. Just to make sure any fleas that come down... Like, it's hard to target, but any fleas that come down the side are going to get hit by the Lotus. Lotus. Anyway. I could rotate the camera, but I choose not to. Actually, I probably should rotate the camera. This map really kind of requires it sometimes. Alright, well, Legomenon able to come in and get rid of one of the Lotuses. Force the commander back. Start breaking down Golda's defenses. And there should be a red back coming in very shortly. Yeah, there it is right now. On top of that, Legomenon a little behind on expansions, which is a slight problem, but still not doing too terribly. They still should rebuild, or should get expansions more quickly, though. Again, Gorda's biggest weakness is that they tend to be very micro-focused. So if you can beat them on macro, then you can kind of have an even footing to start with. Whereas if Gorda's beating you on macro, you're hooped. So Legomenon right now doing okay. They could use caretakers in their base. Gota has a lot more production going into the main base and already has switched over to redbacks. Oof, that is going to be tough. Recklesses are on the way for the Gominon. But it's a positioning question. Oh, and there's a Widow right here. Does not quite get spotted. Venoms aren't aware of it, are they? Oh, that's not going to be good. That, that Widow's going for the commander. There's a Gominon going for the commander. The Widow comes in there, takes them out. And that is going to be the Redbacks finishing off Legomenon's commander. I think that is going to be it. Legomenon's main frontal force is down. Venom's going on a suicide mission, but really not the best option. Especially not when there's more reinforcements in tow. And now Legomenon, having lost their commander, having lost their front line, having lost their main army. They do have an okay economy. They can rebuild, but they aren't actually using metal here. They're using it to build more metal extractors, which that's... That's sensible. But at the same time, they might need more units. Like, now. In fact, the only reason it's not showing up is because they don't have storage right now. I just don't know why this Weaver is doing nothing. I think I think I, there's a misclick there at some point. That Weaver should be doing something more than it is. Oh, wow, that's... Why am I... What the heck? What in the world's going on with my camera? Anyway, that is game one. And I said I didn't move the camera because I chose not to, but it's like I can't move it if I, even if I do choose to. I can move with a keyboard. That was weird. Anyway. I'm sorry about this. I suppose we just move on. Let's just move on. Move on to the... Oops, no, not the intro. I had a hockey for that. Move on to the next match, which is going to be... Involve another round of map bans and is going to be on whatever map is, ba is banned. Though I don't think Mech and Sonic is available. So Mech, I think, is out because the whole no duplicates thing. Or at least you can't play on SAG1 on. So Lego could choose that. I don't know if that works. I don't think that works. I think it's just that that map is just auto-banned. I don't know. It's weird. Looks like we're going to be on Baron or Fallen Dell.
I mean, Lego wants Baron of Fallen Dell. Yeah, I'm just gonna go through the process again. I think next week we'll have the no, it's the first of two. Fine step. The grand finals are best of three. So we're into game two of the grand finals, which I should probably point out in the thing, but no, I won't because there's a thing at the top of the screen that shows which one we're on once we're in the game is the win counter. All right, so we are on to whichever one Golda chooses a Baron or Fallendell. Probably Baron, I think. Golda's tricky. Baron would just be a nice quick win. I mean, either one I think would work okay, but I think Baron would be more up Golda's alley of just going with the quick cheese right now. Not that they wouldn't do well in Fallen Dell, I just don't expect they're going to go for that. Anyway, go to... Go to goes for Fallendell. Okay, so we are on to Fallendell. Bit of a longer map. Should be fun. I'm, I want to see... Because when we saw... Last map was Mecha and Sonia, which is just like... it. Theoretically a macro map. In practice, a spider map. But... With Fallendell, that is more in practice a macro map. Or at least a semi-macro map. So I think this will be a actually interesting match... And not just a weird situation where both players go for the same strategy. Although, admittedly, I gotta give credit to Legomenon. They pulled it off reasonably well for having probably not practiced it anywhere near as much as Golda. So I'm, I'm really impressed with Legomenon right now. I mean, even if they got silver against Golda, that is huge. I mean, you know, beating everyone else and losing to Golda is... There's no shame in that. Beating Golda would be amazing. But, again, at the beginning of the tournament, I said I'm not sure if players are just playing for silver and figuring Golda's going to win. But, if they are, well, Legomenon's not really in a bad situation, all things considered. Oh, uh, Golda? With the Ampbot Factory? And it seems to be a favorite on this map. Which kind of makes sense. Well, Legomenon we going for Cloak Bots, and so we have Amph and Cloak. Which, did we have before? We had Amph and Tank. We had Cloak and... No, we had Rovers and... Amph, I think. No, it was Cloakie and Tank. That's right. So yeah, Amph and Cloak. I'm glad to see this map actually supports a wide variety of factories. I don't know how well it supports them, honestly. I think... We're not really in a good position to judge tank right now. It's it's it seems really strong, and I feel like there's something missing in terms of unit compositions. Like we need to see what players who are planning are willing to use more than just a couple units out of the factory actually get. Cause the times we saw tank be cloaky was kind of weird either way. But yeah, we're seeing amp bot, we're seeing cloak bot, we're seeing rovers, we're seeing tanks. So far, amp bot and tank. Well, Tank more so has still been really strong. Amphbot seems strong enough. I mean, he has a healing from the middle river, but not very much. Yeah, for those not familiar, Amphbots will heal when they're in water. Though, this much water only heals like two, two health per second. It depends on depth. The deeper the water, the more they heal. And the Gominon having seen the ducks, which is immediately over to Ronin. I guess they realize they are against a slower force that's so going to be easier to defend, but also ducks are kind of hard to deal with as glaives. As we can see right here, yeah, they're hard to deal with as glaives. 
I mean, with multiple glaives is no problem, but yeah, the Ronin seemed like a better option. The Legomenon expanding nowhere near as quickly as Golda. I mean, Legomenon, they have... They have one Conjurer. They aren't building any more Conjurers. Their commander is expanding a little bit more, but it's not much. Certainly haven't taken... Anything outside their main base. That's kind of it. I mean, granted, this map does give you super mechs in your main base, which is a kind of neat way of making it a little easier to get into the macro game without having to worry about getting blown out in the raider game. Doesn't help much, but it's an interesting touch from a map design perspective in terms of what we were talking about earlier and the way 0k is optimally played. It might not be a bad idea as a way to kind of give the early game a little bit more stability. I pronounced that weird. A little more stability. Because that's one of the things about 0k. The early game is extremely volatile. And a lot of that is that almost all of it is the fact that your expansions are super important compared to your main base. So, yeah, I like it. Same metal, but fewer extractors, so a little bit more you can go into units. The Gominon, speaking of, though, has quite the scary army coming in here. Not a bad composition either. I mean, the Ronin are scaring off the ducks. You have the Reaver in case the ducks get too close. Glaives as ways of, extract of exploiting any real weaknesses in the lines. And we're seeing Gota once again going for that duck spam. I'm... I don't know. We're, we're seeing it. It's a thing. Same time, the Reaver will be close in position. The Ronin, however, having a bit of a hard time, but they are still basically fighting on even footing against the, the Ducks. But of course, the Ducks have shorter range, so the Reavers are useful. It's a weird position. Like, Ducks don't outrange Riots, but they really wreck Glaze because of the fact that their weapons are homing. Like, I don't know. It's weird having a homing missile raider, but that's what we have. Oh, and now Ducks coming in here should be able to deal with some more damage just because there's nothing in the way to stop them. Reaver able to pull in, put the screws in, but the Ducks are just... They're, they're getting out of here. They're, it looks like they're going for an assault. They're not even going for a straight-up defense. I mean, it's definitely... There's a flank going on, but that's not the main story. It looks like, the, it looks like these Ducks could easily go around, but I think there's too much pressure from Legomenon. Gorda isn't going to abandon their main base. No, but they... Maybe they are. They build enough. They could actually just use the ducks to cut off any reinforcements from Legomenon. But Legomenon at the same time is now in a position where they can actually start really putting the screws in because they have the Reaver right in. The Ronin are at the factories. There are a couple boys, but that's the only real thing that's stopping any of this. The Reaver's got to be careful, though. That, that, that Reaver goes down, the ducks are going to have free reign. That Reaver needs to not die, and that Reaver has just died. The ducks now have free reign. Legomenon's commander is going to go down the... The Ronin have no chance of surviving. Legomenon's commander, I mean, valiant effort on their part, but they have not been moving. If they were moving, they would have had a remote chance, and now they are dead. Ronin in a bit of a suicide mission, trying to be the rear guard, but the commander is not retreating, and now it's dead as a result. Reinforcements continue to stream in from Legomenon, but Gorda has tripled Legomenon's economy, has been building this entire time throughout the map, while Legomenon has been focusing entirely on trying to get an early win. And now, with that early win stuffed, Gorda can go for a counterattack and might be able to take the game straight off that. That being said, Legomenon may have a chance to take out the army if they play this right in terms of positioning. But the problem is their economy is in shambles. Like, one of these conjurers should be going up and start rebuilding, but even then it's, it's tricky because they don't know where to rebuild that's safe. And this is one situation where I'm not going to get on people's butts about radar, because the thing is, is that the... That one unit is going to be important, but no, that's it. Legomenon throws in the towel. That is game. Legomenon went for it, tried to take it 1-1, but they did not manage, and that is Gorda going 2-0, Grand Finals. Taking it from Legomenon, and we are done. That's it. That has been Lobster Roll Week 4. Congratulations to Gorda for getting first place. Congratulations to Legomenon for getting... Massive congratulations to Legomenon for getting silver. Like that, 
That is saying a lot. There's, I mean, you know, some competition there. Steel Blue is a strong player. Stuart 98 is a strong player. Ted McFred is really making a name for themselves, and Bloa is also someone who's been coming, who's up and coming. But yeah, that that was impressive. So I gotta say, Legomenon, very well done. You punched well above at least your rank weight. Yeah, beautifully done. And then Steel Blue, of course, good job in third place. Steel Blue has always been a strong player for years now. And then Ted McFred getting fourth, another bit of a surprise, but yeah, that'll bring the rankings. We see in the we see in the standings right now, Ted McFred is pretty well at the bottom of the standings. And now they've actually gained some points. The Legomenon coming in, and the Legomenon was sixth place. They're going to be moved up quite a bit. Steel Blue did perform above their seed level, but yeah, this is this is Legomenon's day. Though, good job, Golda, as well, taking the tournament as a whole. And yeah, thank you all for our, who are joined to play. Thank you all who are watching, and have a good night. See you next week. Or tomorrow, actually, when you're doing some, probably some exhibition request matches, but next week for the rest of the tournament.